On the evening of March 29th at Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama, United Launch Alliance started pressurizing the upper stage of its new Vulcan rocket. But then something suddenly went wrong with this Centaur's upper stage. Shortly after the incident, to his credit, the chief executive of ULA, Tori Bruno, was quick to acknowledge on Twitter that something had happened. Keeping you posted during qual testing of Centaur 5 structural article at MSFC, the hardware experienced an anomaly. Unpacking this tweet a little bit, Bruno saying that during qualification testing, the process of testing rocket engines and stages on the ground to determine their behavior during flight-like condition, the Centaur stage had a problem. More than a week later, however, there's more questions than answers about the accident. Notably, even SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has reacted to this. So what exactly happened to ULA Vulcan Centaur's upper stage? Will this push back the vehicle's first test flight? Let's find out everything in today's episode of Alpha Tech. United Launch Alliance finally took delivery of the main engines for the Vulcan rocket, two BE-4 engines built by Blue Origin during the fall of 2022. And since then, the company bolted these engines onto Vulcan's core stage and shipped this vehicle and its Centaur upper stage from its factory in Alabama to the launch site. This hardware is undergoing pre-launch processing, after which Vulcan will be put through a series of flight readiness verification tests. This includes multiple tanking tests and a wet dress rehearsal culminating in an engine flight readiness firing. We will set a launch date following successful completion of the flight readiness test, ULA spokesperson Jessica Rye announced. Unfortunately, multiple sources recently confirmed there was a large explosion on that Wednesday evening resulting in multiple first responders coming to the scene at NASA's Field Center, where the company has a test stand. No one was injured, but the accident made for dramatic visuals. A column of burning clear hydrogen shot up into a mushroom cloud that dwarfed the test stand, according to one source. Their test article is definitely more than just damaged. The anomaly was captured on video cameras operated by Blue Origin, which is restoring a nearby test stand. Located about 100 meters from the ULA launch facility, Blue Origin has invested more than $100 million in NASA's old test stand 4670 for acceptance testing of the BE-4 and BE-3U rocket engines. A Blue Origin source has confirmed that a mushroom cloud formed from the anomaly. Afterward, ULA asked Blue Origin to delete the explosive video footage from the company computers, which Blue Origin agreed to do. The loss of the Centaur upper stage raises questions about ULA's schedule for the debut launch of the much-anticipated heavy-lift Vulcan rocket. For a couple of years, ULA has said it was waiting on Blue Origin to deliver BE-4 engines for the rocket's first stage. The fact that ULA was still doing qualification testing of the Centaur upper stage suggests it was also a pacing item for the new launch vehicle. Although this Centaur 5 upper stage is based on a heritage design, the new version nonetheless has significant upgrades. Previously, Bruno said Centaur 5 would be able to operate for 40% longer in flight and has two and a half times more energy than the Centaur upper stage ULA currently flies. Another unanswered question concerns exactly where Centaur stage ULA was testing in Alabama. Was it a fully flight-like stage to be used for a future mission? Or was it more of a prototype stage used for developmental testing, which might be more susceptible to failure? ULA would not comment on this. Publicly, ULA has set a May 4th target date for the debut launch of the Vulcan rocket. However, last month, even before the Centaur anomaly occurred, we reported that this date was already likely to slip into the summer based on the company's internal timelines. The effect of the Centaur anomaly is yet unclear on Vulcan's schedule. We are conducting an investigation and will fly when we believe it is safe to launch, ULA spokesperson Jessica Rye said this week. We will not know the impact to the launch date until we learn more information from the investigation. ULA has asked the primary customer for the CERT-1 mission, Astrobotic, to refrain from shipping its Peregrine lander to the launch site. The lunar lander remains at the company's facilities in Pittsburgh, waiting for the green light from the rocket company. After the accident, Bruno speculated on Twitter that it was very unlikely to have implications for the Centaur 5 upper stage that's currently in Florida and planned for use on Vulcan's CERT-1 mission. However, any determination on this will need to wait until ULA completes its accident investigation and consults with the U.S. Space Force, which will ultimately certify the rocket for national security launches. 
Time is running out for ULA to complete the development of Vulcan and fly two certification missions this year. This would allow the vehicle to begin flying national security payloads for Space Force. ULA had hoped to fly its first national security mission in 2023, but now that seems virtually impossible. After all, spacecraft development is risky and a sometimes explosive business. Just a scratch, that quote from Elon Musk about the ULA accident. Indeed, compared to what Musk and SpaceX have experienced, it's not anything too terrible. The company has launched more than 100 rockets over the past decade in their effort to bring tourists to the moon and Mars, but a number of those unmanned prototypes have gone up in flames. That's showing they're trying to do the unusual thing. The first major explosion, June of 2015, during a cargo mission to the ISS. That Falcon 9 rocket, which was carrying supplies for the ISS, experienced a catastrophic failure and exploded just a few minutes after launch. The incident was a significant blow to SpaceX as it was the company's first mission to the ISS and the Falcon 9 rocket was one of the most advanced rockets in the world. Despite the setback, the company quickly bounced back and resumed its launch operations a few months later. The next explosion, September 2016, during a routine pre-launch test. That Falcon 9 rocket, which was supposed to carry a satellite to space, exploded on the launch pad, destroying the satellite and causing extensive damage to the launch complex. The incident was a major setback for SpaceX and resulted in a several-month delay in the company's launch schedule. In response to the explosion, SpaceX conducted a thorough investigation and implemented several changes to the rocket design and the launch procedures to prevent future incidents. Another explosion occurred in December of 2020 during a routine test of the company's Starship prototype. The Starship, which is designed to transport humans and cargo to the moon and Mars, exploded during a static fire test, which involves firing the rocket's engines while stationary. The incident was another setback for SpaceX's ambitions to colonize Mars, as the Starship is a critical component of the company's Mars mission. But despite the setback, SpaceX continued to push the boundaries of space exploration and has made significant strides in developing reusable rockets and spacecraft. The company's recent successful missions, including the launch of NASA astronauts to the ISS on the Crew Dragon spacecraft and the Starship's successful test flights, demonstrate SpaceX's commitment to innovation and the advancement of space technology. In conclusion, SpaceX's explosions have been a setback, but they have not dampened their determination to explore the final frontier. The company's resilience and commitment to safety and innovation have allowed it to overcome the setbacks and continued to make significant contributions to the field of space exploration. As SpaceX looks to the future, it remains focused on its goal of making space travel more accessible and more affordable for everyone and the company's pioneering spirit is sure to inspire generations to come. We're hoping ULA can do the same. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Hey, don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section below because your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.